make Shane Long is an example of a, of a blow with a disappointment? That. Uh, well, it's a disappointment. I hope it turns out not to be any sort of a blow, of course, because I'm hoping we've got other strikers that can uh, do the business for us. Yeah. It's, a, it's a huge blow for him as well, having come in and recovered from injury from the last time and then uh, picking up an injury this time. So, really disappointed for him. Yeah. It's, uh, I think that's. Uh, excuse me a second. It's just the way it is, so he's got to get back and get fit and hopefully be right for the next ones. Hey, do you have any plans to call in anyone in instead, or are you going with what you have? No, at all. No, I'm not bringing anybody else in. I've got, uh, I've got five, six strikers in, so we've got plenty of ammunition as it was. Mm. Hey, you, were, you spoke last week about you had plans to go back and watch the uh, our previous games of Denmark over the last couple of years to see if we could improve on anything. Have you done that? And no, I'd seen those games. I watched, I watched, I was, it was the more relevant game than I watched against Switzerland. Uh, I think whatever we did against them is got no bearing on what I'm going to do, to be quite honest. I saw them as well when I was doing the Nations League. Uh, not that I can remember them all, because I did a lot of games. Uh, but I remember enough about them. Mm. Uh, the other game I watched was a Switzerland game, and Denmark were excellent in it. I don't know how they were 3 0 down. Uh, they played like the home team, they put the full press on and went after Switzerland. Uh, they conceded well, it was a little bit of a sloppy goal, but then the second one was a handball, it was an awful decision. They ended up 3 0 down. It looked like they're dead and buried, and they ended up being 3 0. So I think that tells you something about their resilience and their determination as well, as well as the quality that they've got. Yeah, obviously everyone knows about Ericsson. What other strengths do you think that they have based on the Just the, Well, the strengths are that they've been playing that team that same shape for a long time. They're a big, powerful team. Sean and Delaney started that one with Ericsson playing in behind. Paulson on the right looks a real threat, running from out to in. Uh, they're, just, they're just a very, very compact, organised. They've been together a while, they play the same shape. The manager's been there for a while, I'll give her ID. So all in all, they're a, they're a tough nut to crack. Mm. And we saw in the Champions League final at the weekend that players struggled to get back into the rhythm after a, a three-week break. I mean, some of the championship players that you have in the squad won't have played for over a month by the time the Denmark game comes around. Is that much of a concern for you that we might be a bit painless? Well, it's not ideal, but I do think, uh, I think the Champions League final was affected as much by the first goal, the penalty after 30 seconds, which I don't in my mind was never a penalty. It seems now anything that hits your, your arm, your hand is. Uh, Tottenham and Liverpool are both attacking teams. Tottenham then, quite rightly in my view, didn't go gung ho and try and get a goal back, with the view that probably the best them and City, best counter-attacking teams would have punished them. They end up 2-0 down throughout the, the game. Uh, and I think Liverpool 1-0 up, equally didn't want to expand and then get done by Tottenham when they got the lead. So I think that had effect on it, but I do also think the three weeks off has a, a cumulative effect on it. Mm, and because uh, although they'll be training, it's that putting the socks on, putting the pads on, putting the boots on, putting the kit on, getting ready for a game, playing a game, the intensity of it, you cannot replicate that in training. Yeah, and the last question for me, the players who then were playing in high, high intensity games more recently in the playoff finals and so on, do you think that they would have an advantage when it comes to team selection in your mind? We'll find out. Uh, and whether playing in playoff finals, winning them has a positive effect or losing them has a negative effect. I wouldn't see that in Richard Keogh though, because he's been great coming into range, just being himself. Real positive person around the place. Whether, uh, you know, Ericsson is feeling it because he lost and they didn't play very well as a team. I've no idea. Whether he turns up and he wants to make, make amends for it, I have no clue. No. I, can't, I can't affect any of those feelings. Pleasure. Think, um, do you ever have any strikers that you want to talk about their big favourites, but there may be a black and cutting edge of points you don't have there. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to try and name them all. Poulsen was the one that, because uh, I can't remember them. I haven't watched the game yesterday, so I'm not even going to try. But the big fella up front was he's a big six foot four, as is Poulsen, who was, I thought, a real threat playing from the right and coming in. Uh, 
They're, real, they're going to th attack in threat, and certainly Ericsson, who didn't, even in that game, he doesn't have to have that much of the ball to be a threat, because when he gets it, if he gets the opportunity, the space, the time, he can find a pass. And of course, his free kick deliveries. They're also a big, powerful team as well, so quite clearly a threat at free kicks and corners. You mentioned uh, Sean and Delaney there as well. I think last time they played here, they, they seemed to have a lot of space to roll into in, in midfield, and that was kind of an area where they kind of got most of their joy from. Do you, do you have to kind of try and stop them before they get to the halfway line? Is that possible even when you're, when you're playing Copenhagen? Well, that would be the intention. I guess it's how you deal with them. Uh, we've, we've watched the game. Uh, Joe Dunn, who's the analyst and has been for a long time, has shown us bits of it, of the other games, only bits of them, and they don't, they don't play any different. They're playing exactly the same way and pretty much the same team. And yeah, and, uh, Sean and Delaney do go on the ball because the fullback, uh, Salzgaard, is it? He pushes right up on top. The wide player comes and plays on the inside. The midfield player drops your targets at full back and try and shift you around. Uh, they're very, very good. They've got good movement. But we'll be trying to uh, stop them in the tracks. Mick, um, the Georgia game showed that we can play very well with the ball, attacking football with the ball at our feet. What do you feel you've brought in that maybe past when I just haven't? Because we haven't seen us play that way in a, in a while. Like, what do you think you've brought in that maybe past when haven't? I'll let you tell everybody that. <laughs> Whatever you think. I, I, just, I just come to be me and, uh, and TC, Robbie, uh, and the staff, and we, I do it the way I see fit. Uh, and if it works, we have a really good performance. I could be one performance away from saying, what do I bring? There's been no difference. I don't know. So I don't, I'm not into that. I'm not into telling you what that is. If yeah. you want to write anything, then please do. Sorry, I'm not. No, no, no. But uh, it's been a great start, obviously. And if things keep going in this vein, obviously we know that the change between yourself and Stephen Kenny in the future, whatever may be of that. But will it be hard for you to, to step aside even though you know it's, it's probably going to happen if you keep continuing this way? We're playing Denmark on Saturday. Friday, actually, not Saturday. Friday. We'll play them on Saturday if they want as well. But uh, <laughs> we're playing them on Friday, and that really is my only focus. Sorry if it's a boring answer to a question that you're hoping for something better, a bit more meat on the bone, but there's none for him, I'm afraid. Maybe. Sorry. Because it's not, it's not relevant to me. That's, I'm, I'm concentrating on the games ahead. So, Mick, two recent trips to Denmark yielded uh, positive results for the team. A lot of the squad remain involved. Can they draw from, from those experiences of, you know, of going to Denmark and just the, the knowledge of, and the, you know, that sort of normality of going there, knowing the, knowing the surroundings, knowing the place, and knowing the team, as you say. For the players? Say, for the players? For our players, yeah, yeah. I would hope so. They've got more knowledge of the Denmark team than I have playing against them. Uh, but I know what it's like being a player. You play against them two years ago and then you have another 40 games the following season, 40 games the season after that and you know, you're not, you're not concentrating on one team. But I think bearing in mind that we've been there and not got beaten then, does that give them confidence? I don't know. Because I, I said the other week when the 5-1 five, five are here, does that knock the confidence? No, it's just a different game. Um, and I don't know whether we're playing any differently. We'll see, see how it affects them. Uh, in the same, over the, over the course of the, of the games, then a few of the Danish players got quite uh, insulting remarks about, uh, the Irish, about the Irish team in general. Um, again, will that, can, can that use, be used as a motivation factor individually, not from you in, in a sense, but just with that sort of thing as a player, would that stay in their, in their mind to, to sort of. It would with me. Yeah. Well, it would. Yeah. Whether well, we're, we're all different. Uh, like I said, they go and play other games. They forget about it. I guess if uh, if you could print what they said and remind them, uh, and so if somebody mentions it, it might just have a positive effect. If listen, if somebody insults you, then I guess you'd take umbrage at it. Want to do something, wouldn't you? If you could, in any positive way, in which you could. Uh, I don't know what they said, to be quite honest. Well, and then just um, final one. What did they say? So if you go in print, or somebody will say it then. 
What did they say? Well, there was comments about a tin of beans. Um, I'd have to go and get the exact quote, but uh, they also said that the football was, was essentially agricultural and, you know, it was very little respect paid to where. Uh, we are from a farming country, though, aren't we? <laughs> 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 um, well, I mean, we'll go on to the match from my own, uh, from, our, uh, from the team's perspective and from your own. Um, here's an insight into your, your way uh, after the Georgia game. You, you had sort of spoke about having solid defence, or central defence especially, then some looking after the 10, and then allowing the rest to go and, and go and play, which you know, yeah. which um, I, I was, I was the case at, again in the Georgia game. So is that still possible, that same sort of approach possible in a way trip to Denmark, albeit a little bit more caution, and like, as you say, Denmark went to Switzerland and played like the, like the home team, so? I hope so, yeah, I have been watched uh... If you'd have sat and watched that with us and not knowing who was playing at home, you, just, you wouldn't have been able to tell. Uh, we will endeavour to play the same way, yeah. And uh, they have one, they play the same way as Georgia do. 4 2 3 1, they've got a real specialist 10 in Ericsson, of course. Uh, yes, we managed to look after the Georgian team there, 10. Whether we can do it with Ericsson for 90 minutes will remain to be seen, but that will be the intention, yes, to play that way. And I think if we play on the front foot, we've got more chance than if we just sit back and try and soak up the pressure and accept that they're going to have the ball. Okay. Anyone else for live? No? All good? Uh, uh, how, 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 sorry, no, go ahead. Uh, can I get rid of He's you? He's big. Here we go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I always answer this question. We'll go next day next. Go on, you try one. How has uh, James Talbot fit into the squad since he's been involved? He's been great. I think he was nervous when he came in, which is natural. You know, he's coming in, he's probably thinking he'll be watching that game or the games on, on TV. But he's done really well in terms of just being in the squad and watching him uh, in the finishing sessions and the games that he's played. It's been great. Yeah, it's nice young fellow. That was all for me. Go ahead, Gaff. It's better than posting letters, I think he says. <laughs> uh, just to remember, Ben Leenan, were you surprised to hear him raised by Aston Villa? None whatsoever. Not at all. Neither was he. He was expecting it. Um, no, you know, you know, the older we get, we kind of get a bit <laughs> savvy about it, and you know what's going on. And the fact that nobody's talked to him about staying on, and he's 35. And I know he had a chat with Dean, and he would be on the bench. Yeah. Would he want to be on the bench at 35? I don't think so. And he doesn't deserve to be. He deserves to be playing in somebody's team. He, the two days he's been in here has been excellent. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. And he's in great shape and he always does a bit extra. No, he'll go and play somewhere. Uh, and he'll want to play because he'll want to prolong his international career. Whatever he played like he did against Georgia, he was excellent in that game. Yeah, he seems the kind of player that might be well cut out for sticking around there, pushing Ericsson and running. I'm glad you think so. <laughs> Do you agree? <laughs> You'll find out on Friday, won't you? <laughs> Like just quickly on James Todd there, you mentioned like it, or it was mentioned to you. What, what do you think his future could hold from? Like he's one of those guys who went to England, didn't work out, and he's come back. He's been brilliant for Bohemians this season. What's what's what kind of potential has he got? Well, I said it was quite clear he's got potential because he was at Sunderland at an earlier age. Uh, it doesn't always work out, as we know that. I mean, the percentage of players that come back from going to England is is an outrageous number, actually. Um, I've told you, I think I said, if you were in the press conference, I said it was Jared Nash who I worked with at Ipswich who had been watching games and said, I haven't seen any outfield players that were going to be, at this moment in time, going to be getting your team. But the one player that impressed him, James Talbot, and that was pretty good news considering the, the stuff we've had with the goalkeepers. Uh, I don't know, let's, let's see how he does for this and let's see how he does in the it continues with his league career and like I would imagine like everybody else if he gets the opportunity he can move back and play and that's what we want to do. I haven't had that conversation with him, I have to be honest. Okay, we're gonna break next door for the dailies, please.